The unit for pressure, the Pascal, is named after Blaise Pascal. That's B-L-A-I-S-E. That's a French name, and he was from France, lived in the 1600s or the 17th century, uh, from 1623 to 1662. And you don't have to know his dates exactly, but if you remember some of the thinkers that we've studied earlier in this course, you might note that he was from around the same time as Galileo and Newton. So he was part of this transition from the ancient and medieval thinking into the modern world. And Pascal was a very significant thinker, worth taking a few minutes to look at here. This is a picture of him. This is a portrait that was made of him. And this is probably a fair representation of what he looked like. And this is a statue of Pascal in the Louvre. The Louvre is the famous art museum in Paris. And that's a statue of him studying. Now I'm going to go through uh, uh, an introduction to some of his ideas and accomplishments and I'll just make some notes here and you can take some notes on the page as I go, th go through these ideas. We said earlier he was from France. He was a French mathematician and physicist. And historically most of the serious mathematicians were also interested in physics because there's a lot of overlap in those fields and he was also a philosopher and he made significant contributions in all of these areas and I'll go through some things worth noting he was a child prodigy he showed extraordinary abilities even at a very early age and 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 through his life uh, had numerous and wide-ranging accomplishments and ideas. One of the things that he, he developed was a mechanical calculator. And I, I believe he was one of the first, if not the first, person to do something like this. To build a little machine that using gears and levers could actually perform mathematical operations. I have a picture. This is um this is his machine. You would set these little dials to to put numbers in, and um and then turn a crank, and little gears and levers would move inside, and actually add or subtract the numbers. Here's a picture showing the inside. This was called a Pascaline. This little machine. And um, that's a, a diagram showing the mechanism inside. And I can't explain exactly how this worked, but you would input some numbers and it would mechanically perform mathematical operations on these numbers. And these machines uh, led to the development of an industry of such machines. Leibniz made machines like this. Other people, Charles Babbage, ended up making machines. More complicated machines, such as this one, came along later. Machines that can actually multiply and divide mechanically. And mach machines such as this came to be widely used. The, the well-known company IBM, International Business, Business Machines, used to make mechanical calculators. Back before there were electronic calculators and computers, they were manufacturing mechanical calculating machines for businesses to use. And the atomic bomb, all the calculations for the atomic bomb were done on mechanical calculating devices from IBM. So, so that was one of his accomplishments, an early mechanical calculator that literally started an entire industry that has led to modern co computing devices. He, uh, Pascal is sometimes considered the father of the computer. Uh, he did significant work in fluids and pressure. And we'll be looking more specifically at some of his ideas there later in this chapter. He did uh, mathematical work in probability theory. And his, his ideas in probability theory were later applied to the field of economics and the study of risk taking, why people perform certain actions as opposed to others and how they weigh the potential risks and rewards. He's known for a mathematical device which we call Pascal's Triangle. And Pascal's Triangle is easy. I'll show it to you right now. I'm going to come over here to the right side and just demonstrate this. 
I'm writing some numbers that show up in a certain sequence and in a, in a triangular pattern here. And you'll notice the ones, there's a one up top and there's always ones going down the sides and the numbers on the interior are made from the numbers above. So see this two right here? That two came from those two ones up above it. One and one add up to two. And you see this one and the two here, one and two add up to three. And here this two and this one add up to three. And here one and three add up to four. And so on, the three and the three give us six. And so using that, you can generate the next row. There's a one here. And then this 1 and this 4 give us a 5. And the 4 and the 6 give us a 10. And then we have another 10 and a 5 and a 1. And we could go on and on. The triangle could be uh, infinitely large. But the numbers that are generated by producing this end up being significant in other developments mathematically. If you go on to study Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, you'll learn a theorem, for example, called the binomial theorem and these numbers in this order uh, repeatedly show up in the study of multiplication of binomials. Uh, there's a computer programming language named after him. There are a variety of ways to program computers, a variety of different languages that computers can understand and one named Pascal was commonly used when I was in school. The, the field of computing computing and, and computer programming changes fairly rapidly and Pascal as a programming language is not widely used today but it was at one time and is certainly a well-known and well-studied language. Now these are just a few of the things that he's noted for but even in this this small list we see a pretty diverse pretty wide-ranging set of accomplish, accomplishments and thoughts. But then in 1654 about eight years before he died, Pascal had a profound religious experience and it actually involved a near-death incident in a carriage accident. Uh, the story is that the, the carriage had gone over the bridge or the horses had actually gone over the bridge and the carriage was left dangling and they were in this, in, Pascal and his friends were in this incredibly pre precarious situation and Pascal actually fainted and was out for a couple of weeks, which is a long time to be unconscious from a, from a fainting such as that. And when he came around, when he woke up, he had uh, very deep thoughts about life and death and about the meaning of his life. And he decided to abandon his work in math and science and, and did so almost completely. His mathematical accomplishments, his mathematical work after that was almost zero. And he decided to devote his energy and talents to the study of religion and philosophy. And he had uh, numerous noteworthy accomplishments in these fields as well. And one of the, one of the things he is well known for is uh, his writing known as the Pensees. P-E-N-S-E-E-S. -E -E and I believe there's an accent over the E. And that, that's the French word for thoughts. And this is sometimes re referred to as Pascal's Pensees or just the Pensees. Pascal had intended to write a huge defense of the Christian faith and he never finished but the notes that he had put together in preparation to write this work were were published posthumously that is after he died and so it, it's an incomplete and unfinished work but it's a very thoughtful and very meaningful work and even in, a, in its unfinished form it's considered to be one of the most noteworthy writings ever produced in the French language and it's still widely read and studied today. You can go to a bookstore today and find a copy of Pascal's Pensees still in print at schools and colleges around the country still widely studied. One of the ideas in there is known as Pascal's Wager and if you study philosophy uh, at the college level, you will probably run into this. It's an argument dealing with whether or not one should believe in God. And while he certainly applied it to his Christian faith, it has broader application than that. And it actually incorporated some of his earlier work of probability into his argument. So that's a, a brief introduction to some of the thoughts and contributions of Blaise Pascal, a very significant thinker and one of my personal favorites.